get in the gate. This is episode 58. We're talking Stargate SG-1. It's all about pretense today, boys. My name is Mitch. Joining me, the full get in the gate team, Matty. Well, hello. Brendan. <laughs> Hi there. And Reese. Oh, g'day, g'day. We are three Stargate oh, yeah, fans <laughs> of long time. And Sorry, we're introducing a... Yes, you did. We are introducing a new viewer to the show. That being Reese. We're up to season three, episode 15, boys. Pretense. We've been looking forward to this one for a while. I have no idea why. I'm one of the long-term fans of the show. <laughs> I no but idea. after viewing it today, I still have no idea. <laughs> I haven't watched these episodes in about 10 or 15 years, I feel. So uh, it was good to look forward to it. Again, not knowing why. And I saw it. I'm like, oh, that's why. Because mm-hmm. this is a pretty cool episode. Let's find out what it's about. Let's do what we do each and every week. Read the back of the DVD and uh, see what the synopsis has in store for us. When SG-1 is invited to the Tolan planet to attend a ceremony called a triad, they are shocked to discover it is actually a trial to determine the fate of their old friend Skara. Daniel and O'Neill must argue a case against a mysterious ghoul named Zapakna to save Skara's personality. God, that reads weird. Yeah. They're shocked to find that the triad is actually a trial. Yeah. They changed the letter. It's so weird on an alien planet so similar. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, the best news about right, this, ooh. at least, you know, sort of foreseeing it uh, for the last couple of weeks, not knowing the story, but seeing that it was written by the one, the only, Catherine Powers. Oh, yeah. This girl is on fire. <laughs> Woo! Find it out, boys! Righto, Major Carter. Yes. <laughs> I'd rather watch Spirit that knife is. fight <laughs> than dance to this. <laughs> yeah, that's saying something. Now, mind you, now, we come in. We've, you know, we've, we've each prepped our own things, and, and oh. Maddie says, look, you know, when you do the usual thing, you read the synopsis, you say who it's written by, just fire off this, I've prepared a little something we can all party on down to, I'm not looking for, mm. get Alicia Keys, this girl's on fire, partying down to shit. <laughs> I'd rather party down to the Austin Powers theme. We've never associated that Powers? with Catherine Powers. Oh, mate, they're related. Oh, I just did. We missed opportunity, obviously. <laughs> All on your behalf. Well, actually, there are a few Austin Powers references that I might use anyway during this podcast. Good tease, mate. Just for a tease. Just throughout the series? No, for this Of this episode. Ooh. Episode. All right. Oh, oh can't Nothing wait. exciting. Well, but... Reese. <laughs> well, any, anything more hardcore than the Demons kept, um, Austin Powers reference? You can't be that. No, that's true. Good call. Mm. Oh, I thought you were going to say, yeah, you can and be a good tease. But... Well, I'll, I guess we'll wait and see. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Reese, you've heard Maddie wait. and Brendan both talk about this with hot anticipation for the last couple of weeks. You go into pretense. You watch it for the first time. Your thoughts, over to you. Yeah, I love this one. It's amazing, isn't it's it? It's really, uh, yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> well, I didn't say that. Oh, yeah, well. No, no, it was, uh, I mean, obviously we got to see the uh, old old love Knox again. What was her name? Liar. Liar. That was pretty cool that she came through. Um, and then the the, 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 the Tolan weapons, their technology. Yeah, the big ion cannons. Mm. And the fact that um, this is, so they, they built a brand new gate. Yeah. Did they go back mm. to the planet that was destroyed and, and bloody revamp, uh, like, Enigma. En- Enigma was the episode, yes? No, that, yeah. No, no, that, no it's that's a new the planet. planet. Okay, so what planet, planet. were they on yeah. in, in Enigma? Because I always their thought that... Their home planet. Yeah. But this yeah. was their home planet, yeah? No, this is no, their new planet. Their new so planet. the guys right. that were left they behind... Moved. They moved, <laughs> they got a new planet, yeah, but they yeah. named it the same thing, yes? Imagine the moving company no. who does that. What yeah. was their original planet? <laughs> their original planet... <laughs> the ghouls. Their original planet was Tolan, and this is Tolana. Tolana, okay. Yeah. That's what got me, because I'm like, that sounds... I'm like, that's the same name... That they were on an ash planet that was g- destroying yeah. itself. Okay, yeah. Because okay, in Enigma, enough. they say they're going to a planet that doesn't have a Stargate. They're all going there by ship. And then there was those few guys that were left behind. Yeah. And they're the guys that SG-1 rescued. Yeah. And that's why they couldn't just gate to their new world. And that's why we had to get the Nox involved to take them to the planet and all that sort of stuff. And then they ended yeah. up just making their own gate anyway. I mean, because you was, can. That was mm. a good moment when they're... When, what's the Tolan's name? Nareem. Nareem. I've even got it written down here. You want um, to pre-read that, buddy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, His name's Nathan. Uh, uh, good callback from a week ago. Um, Clearly it still stings a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, Nareem's like, uh, us and the Knox sorted something out. Yeah. And then... F*** off, Nareem. <laughs> Jack and Daniel are like, oh yeah, of course you do. You're so much smarter than us. Like, yeah. That little comic timing there. Was I hate cool. Nareem. Well, as much as I hate my tooth. Well, yes, I, feel, I feel a bit sorry for him because um, <laughs> Sam basically breaks up with him in this episode even though they haven't dated. It's my pleasure. In fact, I'm pleased 
that we can finally be alone together. Nareem, I asked you to meet me because I need your help. Samantha, I... I have missed you. He's DTF. <laughs> What's happened to me since I last saw you? There is another. No. Me? Not in the way that you mean. How do you know what I, I mean? I was blended with a, a toker. <laughs> Sounds like she you're in a spa at the moment. <laughs> yeah. I still have no memory. It's a crazy Friday. Oh, <laughs> yes. I can't have a relationship with anyone until I'm absolutely sure whose feelings I'm feeling. Ugh. You can feel my dick. Yeah, because she's... <laughs> she wants some matu You are action. very wise, Samantha. I go, what a load of shit. Honestly, yeah. she's like, oh, I can't have a relationship with you until I know whose feelings are what. And I'm like, That's... well, Joe and I never met Nareem, so if you're feeling the hots for Nareem, it's probably your own feelings. No, 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 yeah. no, it's because she's feeling the feels for Martu. No, I get she that. she doesn't know if they're Joel and I's Yeah, feelings. I no, know. No, no, but... Guys, 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 guys. I've, I've been through this before. This is classic friend zone. <laughs> Mate, she <laughs> like gave... Like, any, any excuse will do. Yeah. She liter- literally and figuratively gave him her pussy. Yeah, and he yeah. gave it back. <laughs> well, was his own throat dinger or some shit? Yeah. Oh, Schrodinger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Throat <laughs> dinger. <laughs> throat dinger, that's a sex act. Well, that's that was the first one. That was the first Austin Powers reference for me was when the, the cat comes through and she goes, hold your fire. I never forget a pussy. And then, <laughs> cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, buddy, um, so yeah, what, what was the, the first scene with Scar, wasn't it? How good yeah. was that space I'm battle? Down. That was mm. some good space battle. Yeah, that was that was pretty good. I remember watching it and being like, hey, this is pretty good for like 90s CGI. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's a bit of trivia for you. Looks now, better on a 4x3 screen, though. If, <laughs> if you idiots had been on oh, time and schedule. Oh, oh, settle, settle down. Well, the way I'd planned our schedule is... <laughs> go on. This, this, <laughs> <laughs> we're idiots, go on. Um, this episode was the first one to air in the 2000s. Ah, yes. I was and meant to look that up. It happened to work <laughs> out you. that if we'd stayed on schedule over the Christmas break, this would have been our first episode of the new year. Mm, thanks, mm. Reese. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's our first episode of the Chinese New Year, so... Uh, no, no, that's, no not. that's not until February 16th. Well, what's the date on this episode? <laughs> it's it's oh. the 28th of January. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah, that might just work. Just good. But yeah, the um, I really like the space battle, and it was kind of like... It was almost like a retake of... It was a better version of <laughs> Apophis's crash landing on the planet. Yeah. Which yeah, did, yeah. didn't have as much cool CGI. And better than had... Cori... What was that trial called in Koro, Reese? You watched it more recently than us. Wasn't yeah, it, wasn't it, it called a Koro? It was. Uh, it was something a ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> totally was a Koro. <laughs> yeah. And what are the mothership? Are they Hatax? Is that what Hatak, the? Yeah, yeah the motherships. Like, because you're watching that space battle, and there's the there's the gliders going around firing. You're like, okay, cool. And then when you see like the blast come out and destroy Hatak, you're like. Holy shit! What? Because yeah, like, yeah. My, I get, like last week, my kids were in the room again for this one. I'm like, I should kick him out while I'm watching Stargate, but it's becoming a tradition, unfortunately. And like that starts hey, happening. They're talking to me. No, they're, they're talking to me, and all of a sudden, Hatak is blown up, and I'm like, shut, shut up for a second. <laughs> what the f- is going on? <laughs> I have no memory of this. What the hell? And then the, you see the crash, and at Scar, it was like all of it all just coming back to me in a big way. This it was yeah. such a cool way to open this episode. And Scar, like, how long now has it been since we? Saw him end of season one, or the, well, the beginning of season two, yeah. the two parter mm. there, the serpents um, two parter. So, and we did allude to this in Forever in a Day in yeah when Shara does Sh- Shara they've wrapped up that storyline and now they've they've wrapped up Scar's storyline. He does appear once more in I think season six, but that that's kind of it for Scar now. Now he can go back to Abydos and have a wife and have a life. It's funny how they just die. conveniently know how to get a Guauld out now. Oh, the Toka can do it. <laughs> yeah, what's with that? It's just mm. like, oh, yeah, they they always knew. So yeah, it's like, well, Tilk literally could have shot I mean, Shara uh, in the leg, yeah. and taken her to the guard, like three, to the we- like three yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and and why didn't the Tokra say that as soon as they met them? Yeah. By the way, Daniel's missus is a goal. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a way to uh, yeah. get him out? Maybe they only yeah. found out, you know, while they're on Natu. They only found out then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how convenient. Especially when they figure out that. Sharae is host 
to uh, what's her name? Oh, um, Amonette. Amonette, the wife of Apophis. Like, yeah, it's like she's pretty probably pretty deal. important. Yeah. Got some pretty key knowledge. Get some good intel, and, and she'll yeah. give it to us, given that you know she's yeah. Daniel's wife. You maybe say, hey guys, I don't know if you're looking for Daniel's wife. I don't know if you'll ever find her, but in the you know very minute possibility that you do in this very vast galaxy, you should know one very important thing. We can extract that ghoul <laughs> and get information from it. Mm. Just in case you need to know, you probably never know because it's so unlikely that you will ever find her. But you should know that. It should have been the first and last thing they ever said to her. Yeah. Absolutely. I did like the subtlety of um, the toll and talking about, oh, yes, we are friends with the Nox and we are also friends with the Tok'ra. Oh. And I'm like, somehow mm. I don't think the Tok'ra and the Nox are buds, though. Nah. I don't. I don't. Nah. As, as nice as the Nox are, they're still going to be like, nah, yeah, what, what, maybe. Yeah, not. I guess so. I but, guess the, the toll and are not really up for war like we are. So I guess they're friends with the Nox. Yeah, well, remember, we, we called them in the Enigma and introduced them. Hmm. And then, yeah, obviously they, they call on Lyra to come and help with Triad. Right. How good was her entrance? So good. Mm. You said there was a, a third neutral Archon. That's a Tolan? No. We have asked no. our friends to send someone capable of remaining neutral. I believe you have met. They're in the spa again. Okay. Come try ya! <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, 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 I've, I've missed this music. It's good to see you once again, friends. <laughs> well, this just became a piece of cake. A walk in the park with me at the beach. You know what? I normally get goosebumps when I when that moment happens. No matter how many times I watch it. You guys just ruined it now because every time I watch it, I'm going to think of, <laughs> I'm gonna think of Harlan yeah. walking in going with the same music yeah. still. The, ha, 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 Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Who else could they have? Like, uh, what fate, Scara? <laughs> <laughs> Better fate, Shari. <laughs> um, oh, who else could they have? They could have get... Oh, no, they've, they've, um, they've cured all the... Um, Cavemen, so the good yeah. old cavemen come in and do that. No, they could have had. I would love the pizza cake. Pizza <laughs> cake. It's just still, just still thirsty for O'Neill. <laughs> they could have had Mayborn. <laughs> <laughs> could have um, got uh, Linnea slash Kira. Oh yeah, yeah. To come in. Yep. She would have been stealing shit left, right, and center. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> the good shot to destroy the planet. It's like I did it my own. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was... Harris Bach, well, he wouldn't have been neutral, so they couldn't have got him. Oh, Sorry, I would have oh, just liked his lines, though. I'm just, I'm the just touchstone thinking... grandpa. Oh, <laughs> yes! <laughs> you took my touchstone! I still not can find a shirt! <laughs> the little the little mind-wiped girl from Learning Curve, just with her crayons. Just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cassandra. Cassandra rocks yeah, up. Oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> Jonah. Um, no, what I love about this is that it's such a... It's like a best of SG one, and it, with yeah. Stargate all over really. Like the fact that you got Scaro, and you know, it's one of those few ties left over from the movie. You've still got the same bloke, Alexis Cruz, yeah, yep, playing uh, playing Scaro still three seasons in. So you've got him, and then you have the Tolan show up, and then you've got the Knox, yeah. and, you know, and then you involve the Tokra, and then you've got us. You've got it, it's just such a wonderful mix of all these people. Mm. That's, and then you go, oh, it's Catherine Powers writing it. Who? It's not like she's a, a regular writer in this show, really. She's only had I think a handful. Up, but she only writes six or eight total like or something. Key like episodes, that, though, and yeah. really has got a great grasp oh, on what this show is. Key? Well, she wrote. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> she wrote. Once she, once she got through the door, you Come know. Come on. She wrote Thor's, um, Thor's Chariot. Yep. I don't know if she wrote Thor's Hammer or not. I could look at my notes, but I won't. <laughs> Um, way too far back. No, she yeah, writes good episodes. Whatever she's written, we're in love with her. We've, yeah. we've, we've established that along the way. And uh, a young Kevin Duran. Yes. Yeah, I love this actor. He's yeah, so do so I. much cool stuff. He's awesome, eh? I think he's mm. in Vikings at the moment, is he? Oh, is he? Oh, I, mean, he was, I, th- I think or... his career highlights begin and end oh, with yeah, Wolverine Origins, obviously. No, well, I don't know. He was in, wild... Talking about... <laughs> he was in wild Hogs. <laughs> so... Who are you talking about? Zapakna. Zapakna. Yeah. yeah, which I think the the one negative I have about this entire episode is Zapakna's outfit. The hat. Yeah. The hat and the skirt. Yeah. I don't mind the when skirt. He, when he comes back and like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like you could nearly see his balls. Oh, honestly, you're Pika, Kaka. <laughs> Especially as he sits down, you're like... Oh, yeah. almost. Oh, that's, so close. That's where that, that ball under the table was hiding. He just had it... <laughs> um, like Miss Man, but yeah, when they bring him back Come in, in, like season... relax, take off your bra if you like. <laughs> when they bring him back in, like season five or whatever it is, oh, he comes six, back. Yeah, he comes back as one of um, Osiris's lackeys, and yeah, he's he's looking a lot more badass there. Mm. But what I love about him is he's a bit of a like a Johnny Depp chameleon. 
Like, he actually, given what he looks like, he actually plays, you, we all know, like the butterfly effect. Yeah. You know when Ashton Kutcher is in prison and then there's that, like, um, Latino, Mexican. Mm, yeah. That's him. Yeah, that's right. Um, Bullshit. That's wow. him. That's Kevin is Durant. It? He was the blob in, in X-Men Origins Wolverine. He was Joshua the dog boy in Dark Angel. You know, Did you guys ever see that show that had um, Jessica Alba yeah, in it? Yeah, yeah. No. He was like this Very cleft vague. palate, this like half man, half dog named yeah. Joshua. Oh. Um, he was um, he's a Little re- John in Russell Crowe's Robin Hood. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. He was also the, um, the main alien bad guy in I Am Number Four. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah he's. I really like. Pretty him. sure he's in an episode of uh, your favorite show, Kyle XY, the boy with no belly button. I think he is. I think mm. he's in there as well. Yeah, <laughs> that's my the boy. It's like the that's caption my... of the show, the boy with no belly <laughs> no, button. It's, it's like the, the, the shit version of Harry Potter. <laughs> the poster is literally him lifting up his shirt so you can see he's got no yeah. belly button. That's the poster. A double on. feature with so that. Is it the Mel Gibson, with the man without a face, and the boy <laughs> without a belly button? <laughs> No, I really like him too. I got a lot of time for him because he, the way that he looks, like he could very easily just get typecast as chief henchman number one throughout his whole yeah. career. Never really have to act. You know, he'd show up, be physically intimidating, say a couple of cheesy lines, and you know, die twenty minutes before the end of the movie, sort of thing. But mm. he does get the occasional show or movie where he's able to actually act beyond. Just his physical, just a, you know. Yeah. I, I really, I really fun. like that guy. Yeah, he shows up and he's oh, someone he's always, always knows. He's but... in Vikings, like Reese said, and he plays this kind of demigod type character, and he's really mysterious. Oh, and you're like, nice. what? Mm. I couldn't get past. Weird. I think season three of Vikings. Season one, I loved, but I couldn't yeah. get past. I think season two was okay, but season three, I struggled. Mm. I still don't think I've made it through season three of. Vikings. Yeah, I stopped watching for some reason, but um, not not because I didn't like it, just because uh, I. Stopped watching TV and then I found that mm. uh, The Last Kingdom on Netflix. Oh, yeah. is that any good? It's yeah, seen, it's pretty much Vikings, but the opposite <laughs> version, the opposite side. Oh, they're English. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. Give it a go. Do yourself yeah. a favour. Do your favour. I mean, once you finish, I mean, target. If it's, <laughs> if it's on Stan, it's clearly got to be good content as well. So. Oh. Uh, no, no, no. SBS. No, Netflix. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just trying to get a stand plug in there again. <laughs> <laughs> They're not paying us yet, mate. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. So um, the Tolan are able to block a Goa old from yeah. taking over the host. How cool is that? Uh, mm. How good was the switching back and forward? Like Alexis oh, yeah. Cruz just... Oh, yeah. That's, that's, so that's some of his best work. For yeah. me, I mean, it, it was really good. I hate the whole drop of the head thing, though. Like just to be, I think, oh, so like, oh, just to be obvious, I'm dropping my head, so I'm changing. Well, that's all the Tokra do. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, I think. I think it's oh, that you know what thing, that thing is called to... on his chest? A symbiote silencer. Oh, really? <laughs> Classic. Apparently, where's the Tolan uh-huh. name for that? Yeah, <laughs> I feel yeah. like that's an O'Neill version name. Yeah, of that. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, I agree with you, Riz. I think the the head dropping combined with the giant red blue yeah. indicator yeah. is a bit. Was a bit on the nose. I just think it would be it'd be so like it'd be so much more epic if he didn't drop his head and just changed in the moment, and then the reason that obviously the the color on his chest would change. That's how he knew mm. that he'd be over to the yeah. god that in the flange voice. But maybe it was think- like the FX guy. Would, didn't know his cue until he bowed his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think Alexis Cruz... Blame, <laughs> Blame the AV guy. <laughs> I think Alexis Cruz saved it because to me, the way he was playing it was like every time it would change, it was taking a physical toll. Like mm. I feel like yeah, it was too. hurting Scara. Yeah. Like every... Like he just... He played it just right so that it's like... It was... He was really sort of draining and, and sort of losing his... his yeah, it would have been power, good going so. from Scara to Chlorel if he had of... Or if they were having an argument with each other. Oh, that would have been sick. Oh, that would have been good. Dude. I reckon if if he didn't have like the broken English, bunny, bunny way kind of accent, that's probably why they they shied away from it. But yeah, yeah, that would be really cool to see there. Like a a Gollum Smeagol. Yeah, Yeah, totally. That would be interesting. Especially when he went to Zipakna, we need to have a chat in private. I'm like, What's private, Scarra? Yeah, he's just come back and tell, tell him everyone. everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That makes no sense. Don't you dare poke holes in this, mate. It is, <laughs> it is perfect. I, I started writing down a note to poke holes in it, but it ended up being like the following scene. So I guess if you were yeah. to watch it on TV, it would have been after an ad break. I hate where that. Zipakna's there, you go, nothing of the host survives. And I'm like, you're 
fucking talking to the host? <laughs> Why doesn't O'Neill get up and yell this and yeah, ran this down yeah. their throats? And the next thing is like, if the host doesn't survive, who are we talking? Oh, well, I mean, yeah. it's a remnant. So I, I mean, hate that know. when I was trying to shit on the Arrowverse for you and I'd, I'd go to like really get into something and then they'd solve it. Fix it like, afterwards, like, yeah. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but they, it was a it was a good argument to make. And also, my other, I was like, I don't know whether I've pictured myself being the third man on that table with O'Neill and Jackson, but my argument would be, Okay, oh, you, let's you let's could talk. Have replaced Jackson. He uh, replaced O'Neill. He was annoying as fuck during. Nah, he was me. I think he was me in that trial. I'm <laughs> yeah. Like he's saying the shit that oh, I would want to say. Oh, at, at, at the end when um, the cool, partner right. voted, he's <laughs> yeah. like, he's like, big surprise there. It's like we didn't need that. Cut that shit out. We did. Nah. Anyway, you can go. Whatever. No, no, I, I just felt like <laughs> arguing, like, talking to Zipakna and go, well, let's hear from your host. You know? Let's see what he to... thinks about being your host. Zipakna but... wanted yeah. to take over Chlorel, and he's like, yeah, I vote, I vote for Scara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to take his ships and shit. I yeah. loved where it showed how menacing the partner could be, despite his hat and his skirt, is when he comes back and he's like, look, we can see the point, you know? that. Mm. Oh, they're, they're, they're still here. They're yeah. still here. Turned that into an argument. Yeah, and then he yeah, t- turned it on his own. He said, well, what, what happens next then? Mm. Oh, you know, man. Was that like, was, was the like, best. Oh, that's yeah. really kind of We just skipped over it, but I really like your point there, Mitch, where where you said that, hey, all right, well, give us, let, let us listen to your host and see if he likes being your uh, yeah. body. Yeah. Mm. There's no the way Zaparkna ever would have been privy to it. Like, he never would have accepted it. Yeah. yeah. Toll and are so ballless, they never would have forced it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. that would have been. Let's put one on you. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, a symbiote cool. silencer on you. Yeah, I just loved it, and it's and we've had this chat before um, when we're talking about you know when when Daniel you know empties a clip into the the bowl of symbiotes and stuff like yep. that. Yeah, and I I kind of had the same sort of feeling in this, and in, in, in a way, it's like his argument was Zapakna's argument yeah. about the beast of birds. Yeah, when it's that like in so the, good. we consume mm. you know yeah. cows and chickens and, mm. and all that sort of yeah. stuff, and you think about the the horrible way that that we get milk. Like cows don't yeah. give milk all year round. It's it's only when they've had a child. Mm. So it's like yeah. we impregnate cows, mm. so they can have so they'll make milk. You yeah. know, we do we do some pretty bad stuff to mm. animals. And I yeah, I had no argument for him. Like if an alien came down and said, "Why do you why are you doing that to that animal?" Like I'm no vegetarian, but no, no, me neither. But I can't justify doing it. Mm. It's just what we've been doing. Yeah. yeah. So I'd, I'd, if an I'd, alien came and said, "Why are you doing that to that beast?" Like and you're like, yeah. no, I don't. I want. Bacon, yeah. It? Well, that, that's it. If, <laughs> yeah, yeah. if we were living in that's one Star Trek times, sure. <laughs> I mean, usually I wait until um, after you finish. But. They have, <laughs> they have their, they have their replicators, and it's like, well, they can, they can recreate any kind yeah. of food, and it's, it's molecular integration, so they yeah, can just, cre- they can convert a rock into food, you know, yeah. mm. and never have to kill an animal. And it's like, well, if that technology existed, I would totally be vegan, you know, and I wouldn't yeah. consume animal products. Absolutely. But, yeah. Well, well I think it was so hard in one day to, to be vegan, unless you're a massive hipster who only lives in the city and has never actually been to a farm where you see animals actually being cared for. Yeah. And you want to be a pretentious boob like, as I'm vegan and tell every single person you know about it in between. You <laughs> I know, think if, if given the choice, <laughs> like if given the choice of if, if there was as much variety uh, in food as there is now, but without having to eat animals, I think everyone would go for it. But yeah. oh. if you go, if you turn vegan, there is way less variety. You've got leaves and nuts to eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like seriously, like that's it. Yeah, like faking is. I've tried faking. It's not a thing. <laughs> and then there's yeah. a. Um, I love the name though. As much I, as I despise the product, great. the <laughs> name faking. I, like, I, I when I went faking and schmegs or something. I watched this episode <laughs> and it stuck with me for a bit because I went to a supermarket and I was in kind of the fresh produce section and it's in abundance, like beautiful colours. And then you go over to the deli and it's already meat and it's already it's in meat. display and whatnot. Cut Imagine up. if you went into the supermarket and there's all the fresh produce and if you wanted meat, you had to go and butcher a live cow. Yeah. 99% of people wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. No. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's, and it's the same. I'm sure there's like an episode of the Twilight Zone that'd be the same sort of thing where it's like, there'd be a trial and it'd be between humans and pigs and pigs would be SG1 and, and we would actually be the girl would and pigs would be like, well, why are you eating us? And we're like, well, yeah. you're delicious and you're livestock. So yeah. it's like O'Neill's argument against that was like, oh, well, we're self-aware. And it's like, what do you base that on? Yeah. Like, yeah. And then the weird distinction that we as humans have, it's like, well, we'll eat some animals some yeah. adults, lions, no, they're beautiful creatures that should always yeah. be out in the wild. Yeah. But then dogs, no, they're def- domesticated pets. Like we've yeah. assigned yeah, arbitrary yeah. groupings to certain animals. It's like, well, we'd never eat a dog. 
but it's like there's animals that we draw the line at that we won't eat. Yeah, you know whereas I mean? pigs are more intelligent than dogs. Than a dog, yeah. Yeah, so but it's like, we're still class that oil. Well, yeah, but oh, a pig's dirty. tasty. <laughs> yeah. So, so and the, the the argument to always shut a vegan down is always but bacon though. Yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, they love hearing that. They obviously. understand. Yeah, they love hearing. But that, this obviously. is what I like. If you're good. if you're a vegan and you've got an ant problem in your house, do you kill them? Yeah, do you do spray? Because that's ultimately that's like on your conscience. That's why you're a vegan, right? Mm. Because you don't like the way animals are treated or killed. But if you have got an ant problem, do you kill the ants? Mm. And if you do, then what's the difference? Yeah, yeah. That's what I don't get. Yeah, it's a really interesting sort of subject, and I, and I like the way this episode touched on it. Yeah, yeah. It just kind of made you sort of think a little bit. And you go, As, yeah, oh, yeah, like cause... totally. I didn't even think about it like that until bloody old mate said that about it. Why do you mm, class yourself or inferior, how do you know yeah. that your inferiors aren't self-aware? Yeah, how do you know that? Like if, if we if we looked at a growled symbiote, we go, oh, that's not sentient. Like when you, mm, when yeah, you yeah. see Junior pop his little thing out, you go, well, that's just a little fucking worm. Like yeah, that's not sentient. Yeah. You know, we see dogs barking to each other. That's like, well, just because we don't understand it, we don't know on what level they're communicating. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting. I, that's, that's one of the reasons why I really froth over this episode. Yeah, because it's got awesome space battle at the start. But I love it how got... Zapakna makes two like examples, saying a pig and a rat, like two Earth animals. Mm. Yeah, not necessarily on any he's other done planet. His, yeah, he's yeah, done yeah. his research. Yeah. On yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. Given that Scarra wouldn't know what they are either, so no. it's got no frame <laughs> yeah. of See, I even thought the same when Nareem <laughs> was when they first saw the uh, symbiote silencer, as you put it, and he said, "Ah, uh, the red means that." Uh, Chlorel is in charge, and uh, the blue means it's Scarra. And I'm like, why? Why are the colours even named the same in this planet? Like, I don't even know why. The, it's yeah. like this oh, is about yeah, a show yeah, where they yeah. just went through a bloody wormhole to go across the galaxy. They've went through a force field that renders their f- physical weapons, weapons yeah. force field, yeah. fluoro light, or fluoro light, light you know. Yeah. And yet the fact that he refers to the colour blue as blue, I'm mm. like, oh well, come on. Like, I don't and know. Then, yeah. Given he didn't know what a what a bed sheet was the last time he <laughs> yeah, saw right. him, like, he's like, "What do I do with this?" Just or wait, a cat. Just, yeah, just, just like, waiting for or li- a cat, but they know what a pig and a rat is. Yeah, <laughs> just waiting for liar to go. What is a rat? Yeah. Mm. Oh shit, we have to explain this shit. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, it's what's living in your headdress right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gets up and runs away. Yeah. <laughs> I just I love at the end too when um you know they're sort of yeah because liar did kind of save the day. And she goes, oh, mm. I merely hid the weapon. I did not fire it. And Carter's like, it's a pretty fine line you didn't cross. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Oy, that She's pissed, like, yes, it is. Yeah, that pissed no, that me was, off yeah. That, yeah. that Carter was throwing her shade over that. She literally saved the planet and your lives. So don't go, oh, yeah, but I thought you were passive. Like, golf Carter. Like, she just <laughs> saved the whole planet. <laughs> I do, I do like to make how they say now. those ion cannon, cannons are automatic. But mm. at the start of the episode, there's four dudes in plain dress standing at the cannon as Clorel's ship's coming down, crash landing. Yeah. There's four dudes in plain dress, and you'll see, and and they're the guys that run over to the ship, and get, and he's like, oh, they're just me. doing mm. maintenance, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same way later on when they're getting their tour, and because because they're oh, what I thought was really clever is the way that because um, the big thing at the end is obviously that Tilk knows how to fire the weapons. Yeah. You know, that's a big With point. great proficiency. Yeah. yeah. But then earlier yeah, on... how is that? Well, earlier on in the episode, they're he getting, a, they're getting a tour of the Ion Cannon and you see the panel is, is off and you see them operating in control yeah. and there's a shot, like a cutaway of Tilk just watching what's yeah. going on. Uh, so okay. to me, that little things like that, I really mm. appreciate. Yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. that, but it seemed like that guy was at that keypad for ages and Tilk just sort of glanced over once and had a look. Mm. I hated mm. the tone in that scene where, you know, Tilk, you know, comes to... Uh, O'Neill and Jackson, whoever, and says, "Look, we've 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 found something. You know, we've we've been following them. They tell the toll, and they all rush out there, and they're like, we've been watching the Gould mess with your weapons. Yeah. We think that what they've got, they're going to probably stage an attack. So they're using yeah. this as a diversion, buy some time for their ships to get here. They're fucking with your weapons, and they went, no, they probably haven't. They well, painted no, them. They definitely, no they, they definitely yeah. have." <laughs> Uh, well, even if they have, th- they wouldn't work. And I'm like, what are, you, what are, you, what are you just jumping? That's like, okay, well, we'll let them play with it because they won't be able to do anything anyway. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah. Maybe investigate the fact that by they've nature. actually, yeah. yeah, they know how. Shit they know yeah. what they're doing. Like they've taken over how many worlds, and you think <laughs> yeah. they won't take over yours? Because what? You've got heaps of no. We've got heaps of them. Yeah. They yeah. can't get them all. Well, there can't be. There, there can't be, there 30, can't be any settlements or ion cannons on the other 36. side of the planet. Yeah. Because obviously the, the Goo old ships in orbit can only obviously, and it tagged them all in one hit and took mm. them all out simultaneously. Yeah. So it's only taken them around this kind of city. So it's like, yeah, if there's any, I mean, granted, these are the new planets, so they might not have taken over the whole thing yet. Mm. 
but theoretically, you know, there could be six goal <laughs> chips on the on the other yeah. side of the of the planet. They could just park Fly there. Fly in fine. in the back door. <laughs> well, we got you. Ah, surprise! Oh, you're dead. <laughs> Uh, that in the back door. It's still a perfect episode, so it's fine. I like that those those, those massive bloody turret cannons can just take out a bloody mothership. Mm. And the cool way hit. at the end that we like we followed the um, yeah that was kind of sick yeah through, yeah. The, uh, through the atmosphere. I thought yeah. that was really through the cool. clouds. I hear they were like, oh, we owe you. You know, you did yeah, okay, you did kind of save the planet. And, you know, what do you want? And O'Neill's like. Just the plans, those iron cannons, it will be on our way. They're like, yeah, we're still not giving you one of those. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, what else? We thought like a cat or something. <laughs> <laughs> we, we call them trees. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Tilk, they like, took your sweet ass time to reveal the plan at the end. Like, you know, the city started getting attacked. There's like shit blowing up everywhere. Mm. And it's just like, oh, this way. And he goes and hides. Like, what are you doing? Oh, we've got something. What? <laughs> nah, it's a surprise. not yet. <laughs> <laughs> they phase somewhere else and they show up. They're like, what is it? Nah, walk this way. Yeah. <laughs> like, people f- dying. Like, yeah. you do this shit quick. Yeah. Just do it quicker. And it's, we've, we've only Maya ever- almost got capped. Yeah. And we've only ever seen the, the Nox technology as like illusion. And she says, you know, mm. we, we focus on mastery of the mind and mm. illusion. But then now they've kind of added like a teleportation power. Like, cause they're, mm. they're cowering underneath there when they're taking cover and she does a little sort of thing. And then next minute when they appear, they're kind of walking through the brush. So it's like, did she teleport them that way or were they invisible? And did then walked walk all that yeah. way, mm. like yeah. Mitch was saying, while people are dying around them and they're walking through the yeah. invisibility. Oh, the facing on him, cause like when she showed up, uh, was it, was it the toll one episode? Which episode yeah. was it? Enigma. When the, the Enigma. Enigma yeah. And they had the iris up and yeah. she appeared. Mm. Sort of beyond the iris, and they're like, "Whoa, I guess you can do that." So if you ever go dark side, we're fucked. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so true. and then the guns kind of disappeared, and yeah. they couldn't hold them because I always thought it was just. Oh like, yeah, that's right. They didn't. Oh, yeah. yeah, they weren't just invisible. They yeah. were kind of just yeah teleported away. So yeah, no, that makes sense. In the cloud. <laughs> Even the knocks don't understand. Yeah. Jack, Jack goes up to him, and goes like, "We still didn't get those back. Can we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we need like, them. We've, we've got inventory. Yeah. We need to do." So it ends, and it was all like, <laughs> you know, like our bed sheets. Happy go lucky, you know. I actually did start to fear for Scar again because I I've got very little memory of these episodes, and I know that Scar only appears a handful of times well, beyond the movie. Didn't end well for Shara either, so no, it didn't. <laughs> and and I'm like, how does Scar end? You know, does he like ha- go and live happily ever after? Does he die? In this, does he die in this episode? And so when they go, oh, you've now got complete control of your body, and I knew that there was still at least five, six, seven minutes until the end of the episode. Mm. I'm like, oh god, just because he's got control of the mind, mm. that doesn't mean that yeah. the symbiont's not going to go on a full-on like kamikaze mission and like kill him from the inside. Like He's going to get his freedom, mm. walk up to the gate, he's about to go back to Earth, the SCC, go back to Abydos and see Bundiwe, and just <laughs> just die in front of yeah. them. Well, obviously, the, the symbiote silencer must have also, yeah, stopped... The suppressant, sort su- of... Suppressed, because the, the symbiote... Because remember, um, Joel and I chose to die to save Carter and all that sort of stuff. If... Don't they say, isn't it even say it's like if they die inside you, the toxins can kill you and stuff mm, like yeah. that? So theoretically, if Scar is like, um, Chlorel's like, all right, well, if I'm going out, I'm taking you with me. Yeah. He could have, you know, poisoned Scar or something. Well, like well Chlorel could have so... jumped out of him and tried to jump into someone else. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, true. So yeah, the silencer obviously just might, might, might have put him into stasis or something like that. Yeah. i tell you what, he's gotten big when they took him out hey, in the little lantern. Yeah. He's, whew, he's like two feet long. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Pull him out like for a, weeks. All the way down the spine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got to leave. It's like a ringworm. Just like <laughs> <laughs> it's all happy go lucky, you know, and it's, you know, they sort of just, you know, zoom out, whatever, and then fade to black. And I'm like, oh, okay, so Scarra joins the SGC now. It just had that sort of feel to it. It's like, <laughs> and yeah. we rescued another alien that we yeah. really like, and he can come back and join our team yeah. or live with O'Neill, you know, and they can yeah. go on buddy cop episodes or something. When does Daniel tell him about Sharae? Yeah. Uh, which I thought was really clever in the way they kind of didn't have time to, for him to have, for Scar to have a moment with everybody. So it's like mm. Daniel was in there with him during the implantation mm. sequence. So he was the first one that the Scar would have seen. They would have had their moment there. And I think that's better oh, than they yeah. had it off screen. That's true. He comes out, goes, guess what? And then, and then Scar runs out. He has his moment with O'Neill, which of it he has to have. Yeah. yeah. He has. That was a bit of, underwhelming. Uh, when, the, when he first saw him and then the, the light turned blue and he's like aren't you happy to see me like i would have thought jack would be like holy shit like well, they didn't believe it yeah i think yeah. he's still a bit wary he's like there's yeah, a snake yeah, anywhere true. near them yeah. He's, yeah. he's not trusting no, i was, I was yeah. looking right at the end when when the implantation oh, when he first taken out. Out. He wears and the, the poor shit. bugger coming out in toker clothing it's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they couldn't give him some tolan clothing <laughs> yeah. or something why give him the lamb's wool tripe it's like come on um 
So he has this moment with O'Neill, and then he has, I think, more of a catharsis with Teal'c than Daniel Jackson has ever had, and he's a friggin' main character. Because <laughs> yeah. obviously, you know, what happened to Scar and Shara is, is Teal'c's fault. Like, he's yeah. the one that mm. selected them. So he kind of, they yeah. have this... <laughs> Made her gold and killed her. They ha- yeah, they have this sort of mutual respect moment, and they, you know, they do the warrior, you know, forearm grip yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And like, yeah, and we'll pull out while Carter gives him a hug, fade to black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I so did. I, yeah. Even though Daniel is his brother-in-law, and he spent a year with him teaching him English, I always found that Scara was always more towards O'Neill. Like, yeah, oh, O'Neill. Oh, I was yeah. definitely O'Neill. I yeah, just like the. Mo- I think the why? moment. Well, because they had all the all Daniel's the stuff a in the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the stuff in the movie. I think it. Because the movie kind of plays it up as Scara being a surrogate son. Yeah. So I think they played yeah. you know, for O'Neill. Yeah, but yeah, I think for, for Scara, I don't know whether it was just maybe it was some kind of weird macho thing. Like he comes in and just like you, it was almost because he cared the least out of any of those soldiers mm. in a way. Maybe I don't know. Scara warmed to that somehow, and then he brought out that softer side and O'Neill, and then for O'Neill, yeah, that he could was be just some could weird be an Abedonian stuff. custom. He's like, I don't want to get involved with the dude that's dicking my sister. Yeah, like they can do their own thing. I'm trying to find my own bit of. Bit well, he of managed to side. teach him English. That's a... yeah. Well, well the well, moment I taught the whole village English. Yeah, very yeah. good English. Yeah, I lost their accents. Um, <laughs> the, the moment between them for me was during the trial, and they sort of said, you know, just dis- discuss what it's like for you. If you this is worse than death, and he's like, well, I watched my own body, my own arm raise Stretch up a weapon like, oh. to my to da- to Daniel, the husband of my sister. Mm. And was about to kill him, and I'm, and you could see him like nearly crying through that, and I'm like, okay, that's kind of not that it was a moment of sorrow for Daniel or anything like that. It was just like a, I don't know, expressing his love for Daniel without, I don't know, doing the same mm. as he was with O'Neill later on in the episode, where you you got reminded why or just how they loved yeah. each other from the moment they met. Really, the only time, the only other time is when Scara says, "Oh, O'Neill is brave" or something, and then but Daniel is Daniel wise. Is wise. Mm. Yeah. So was- well, I feel like Scar is kind of, he's a bit more of a warrior. So I think, yeah, he does have a bit more of a connection with yeah. with Jack. Um, yes, Daniel's taught him, you know, I'm, I'm sure Scar goes home and goes, oh, that pussy Daniel. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he freed yeah. my people and killed Ra, but still, like, yeah. come on, man. man <laughs> I told her not to get mixed up with him. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say, this is what I call the beginning of the golden age of Stargate. I've yeah. been like pretty much. Oh, foothold. The back for me. half. Foothold is awesome. Yeah, foot, foothold's good, but me and pretense. <laughs> um, but you could definitely include foothold in that. I think the the back half of this season, short of maybe one or two episodes at the end of the season, aren't, aren't great. And then basically the entirety of season four, bar again two episodes towards the end of the season. Yeah. Just some of the most consistently solid, excellent Stargate episodes there are. Yeah. Like, really. Until things change a bit, you know, the end of season five, because that's when they change from Showtime to sci-fi and the show gets a bit more comedic and, and loose and there's cast changes and that sort of stuff. Mm. But, um, yeah, this is this is the start of a really, really good run that I'm really excited about. So if you thought about tapping out, Reese, you've picked a bad moment, mate, because it's oh, going to yeah. be all good from here. Well, if it gets better from here, I think uh, if I've come this far, <laughs> might as well finish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's episode 58 of Get Into Gate Pretense. Pretty good episode. We've been looking forward to it. Another one that you guys have mentioned uh, off air has been Ergo, and that is next week's chat, episode 59 of Get Into Gate. You can catch us back next week for Stargate Sundays. Uh, until then, you can catch us on all the socials, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Like and uh, follow us there. Simply search Get Into Gate, a Stargate podcast or drop us a line get into gate at gmail.com you can find all of our podcasts if you are joining us for the first time on soundcloud android and itunes subscribe and listen to all of our episodes there myself mitch underscore lewis on twitter and instagram you want to come and chat stargate there with me maddie where can we find you at high pitch maddie on instagram brendan i'm at the brendan gibson and Reese. I'm at the Flying Gibson. We'll catch you back next week and for more Get in the Gate with Ergo. See you then. Get into geek.com.